Hello guys and welcome to a little push. This is the place where we help you to understand high yield medical concepts, to score higher in your exam and become a better doctor. So let's start with the question. A 32 year old G2 P1 woman in her third trimester present to the ambulatory care clinic with dysuria and urgency. Urine is nitrate positive and leukocyte is trace positive. A drug commonly used to treat urinary tract infections is trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, but the physician is reluctant to use it. What risk is the physician worried about? So basically this question along with other similar questions present in board exam is asking about the teratogenic effect of the drug. And one of these answers is the right answer associated with this drug. So along with this, by the end of this video, you will be able to answer these kind of questions with a solid understanding and knowledge related to teratogenic drugs. So let's start with it. Regarding teratogenic drugs or teratogenicity, we know that the fetus stay in the womb approximately 38 to 42 weeks. So, teratogenesis, as a word by itself, comes from the Greek word meaning monster. So, this is how they think about the drug affecting the fetus. So, this drug if it's present to the mother before week three, like week three after, uh, or throughout the first three weeks after conception, you will have either all or none phenomena. That means either you will have the baby dying or you will have no effect at all on the fetus. On the, sex, on the second duration, from third to eighth week, this is the period where you have the body organs of the fetus is developing. So any agent, if it can cross the placenta and can cause an effect on the fetus, the effect will be a significant deformity. On the third duration, after week eight, uh, here, after the organ have developed, it will start to grow and acquire its function gradually. So any agent presented in this period, after week 8, it will have growth and functional affected of the fetus. So the most dangerous period, apparently, is period between 3rd to 8th week. So now, Throughout this video, we will be discussing specific high yield agents, talking about the associated deformity that they cause, and we will throw some quick, cool mnemonics here and there to help you remember it. So the first agent is thalidomide. Back in the days, in 1960s, there was no strict control on the medications used by the pregnant women. So, in 1960, the pregnant women used to, thousands of, the, of them used to use thalidomide to treat the morning sickness. And what they found out is that many of these women, their babies, they were having limb defects, as you guys can see in the picture. So, they associated that thalidomide is associated with limb defect and it's highly, highly teratogenic. So, let's move one step further and think about how we can remember it. So, whenever the word thalidomide comes, I want you to remember thalidomide, which is our mnemonic to remember thalidomide. Thalidomide causing limb defects, the, the limb domite. So let's move on to the second agent. 
Next, we have warfarin. And whenever I re uh, read the anticoagulant warfarin, I think about war, cross duty, or any kind of war. And actually, this agent is causing a war on a baby. It will cause anything that can happen in a real war. Like, for example, structural damage, bone and cartilage deformities. There will be bleeding, like fetal cerebral hemorrhage. And in some cases, there might be nerve, da nerve damage, like optic nerve atrophy. So it's actually a war on the fetus. So it's very uh, harmful to use that anticoagulant. What is the solution then? There is the other famous anticoagulant that we all know, heparin. So heparin can be administered to the baby and it will not cause any significant or anything. So how can we remember that? Heparin equals happy baby versus warfarin, which equals war in baby. So whenever you are you want to administer an anticoagulant, remember that heparin will make the baby happy and warfarin will cause a war on a baby. Now let's switch gears and talk about illicit drugs like alcohol or smoking and cocaine. Now for alcohol, it is associated with the highly famous syndrome called fatal alcohol syndrome. These syndrome have very characteristic uh, features. It have a abnormal characteristic face, like you can see in the picture, small head, undeveloped jaw, small eye openings, etc. There is low IQ of these children. Uh, they will have uh, microcephaly, heart defects, and limb dislocation. So whenever in the question, they might give you this feature and ask you about the syndrome or ask you about what probably is the agent that the mother was taking to your pregnancy. So let's move on one step further and think about a way to remember that. So this is a fatal alcohol syndrome caused by alcohol. And the word alcohol has two O's. So alcohol is our mnemonic, A, abnormal characteristic face, L, for low IQ, C, for microcephaly, H, for heart defects, L, limb dislocation. We are just ignoring the O's and alcohol for fatal alcohol syndrome. Now we have remembered so many drugs and agents, so you are more likely to answer more questions related to the teratogenic effects. Now, switching gear to smoking and cocaine. How fancy is that? So we know that smoking is associated with bad environment. It causes a lot of things. Like uh, We know that it will cause lung cancer for our body, and it's harmful for the environment. It's not harmful, uh, only harmful for the oxygen outside the body, but also to outside the body. How is that? The smoking, uh, along with the smoking, there will be carbon monoxide, and carbon monoxide can bind to hemoglobin instead of oxygen. This, along with the chemical substance that smoking and cocaine have, which is uh, nicotine, which can cause a vasoconstriction effect. Uh, this way, you will have less, less supply and oxygen to the placenta. And by knocking down oxygen, you will have no growth. And the baby, the fetus will have low birth weight, preterm birth, or maybe an intrauterine growth retardation. Why? Because there is no adequate oxygen delivery to the fetus. So no adequate growth. Now moving on to talk about the antibiotics related to pregnancy and, teratogenic, and their teratogenic effect. So this is the list of teratogenic antibiotics. Mainly we have six of them, 
that are highly associated with teratogenic effect so let's talk about them one by one and, and by the end we can give a cool mnemonic to remember all of them we have first fluoroquinolone which inhibit DNA gyrus it can cause cartilage damage we have aminoglycoside which work on the protein especially the 30 uh, substance of ribosome it can cause autotoxicity which means ear damage and even in some cases it can cause deafness we have sulfonamides which can cause carnectaris carnectaris is a condition where we have hyperpilaropenemia and this hyperpilaropenemia will go to the basal ganglia and cause severe neurological deformity we have tetracycline which is associated with this teeth discoloration we have clarithromycin which have been reported to cause a risk of miscarriage and lastly we have chloramphenicol which is associated with the lethal famous gray baby syndrome now to remember all these six drugs associated with antibiotics we need to set the scene so imagine that you are in the Ubgani ward and you have a pregnant woman came to you and she have some sort of infection you want to deliver an antibiotic to this woman but you want to be careful to not administer any of the teratogenic antibiotic so you will need to deliver fast child care and fast child care is our mnemonic you can see the letters the capital letters with the, with the pink color F stand for fluoroquinolone A for aminoglycosides S for sulfenamides T for tetracycline, T for clarithromycin, and C for chloramphenicol. Fast child care, and you will give a good child care in the upcoming. So now, after discussing the high yield, uh, the high yield teratogens, let's go back to the question and answer it. Now again, uh, here in that question, the drug that was given is trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole and we remember from the last slide the antibiotic sulfamethoxazole was associated with carnectaris so in the answers the answer B is carnectaris uh, to discuss the other answer gray baby syndrome is associated with chloramphenicol is the right answer associated with sulfonyl limb defect is associated with thalidomide premature labor is associated with smoking and answer E the physician is being overly cautious no the, the, uh, the physician is giving a fast child care which a child care that we should all give in the future